Imagine a planet with no sun. Once it became unwanted in its own star systems and got ejected into the soulless emptiness of space. Or maybe it didn't even have its own star system. It was born lonely. Oh. I'm talking about a rogue planet. Such planets are also called orphans, nomads, unbound, and sunlets. It all sounds pretty sad, doesn't it? The rogue planet in question doesn't have sunlight. The never-ending night rains on its surfaces. No light means no warmth. And that's why there isn't any kind of life on this frozen world. But believe me, this isn't the scariest part. One day, a rogue planet might push Earth out of its cozy spot near the sun. You see, we live in the habitable zone of our star. It means that our planet is such a distance from the sun that water can exist on its surface in its liquid form. But an interstellar intruder could mess it up for us. If a rogue planet somehow got into our solar system and we didn't manage to stop its imminent approach, it would likely crash into our beautiful blue planet. And then Earth could be pushed out of its orbit, retreating to an extreme orbit farther from the sun. Now let's imagine what would happen to our world if a rogue planet the size of Mars collided with us. Most likely, people would react with panic and desperation. We've had a few sad examples of space intruders wiping more than three-fourths of all life forms off the face of the planet. One more similar event would be devastating. The immediate impact <laughs> pardon the pun, of such a collision would be truly catastrophic. It would lead to massive losses of life and destruction of huge areas of the planet. At first, people would focus on rescue and recovery efforts. But soon, it would become obvious that the world is beyond salvation. The climate all over the planet would start getting colder and colder. Plus, the farther our planet would be from the sun, the weaker the star's gravitational pull on our planet would be. In the end, our beautiful Earth would get too far away from its main source of light and heat. It would turn into a lifeless piece of rock covered with a thick layer of ice. Well, that's rather grim. But what if humanity had foreseen this catastrophe and prepared for it in advance? What would our life look like, and where would we live after the cosmic disaster? If, by the time of the collision, people had already established a colony on Mars, we would probably have some time to leave Earth and set off for the Red Planet. But would it even be possible to transform this distant world so that it became capable of supporting human life. Oh, and it would no doubt be an enormous feat. You see, Mars is an extremely dangerous place to us. If you somehow teleported there without any protective suit, the gas in your blood would instantly turn into bubbles, which is not good. Add oxygen deprivation, cold exposure, and radiation poisoning to the equation, well, you get the picture. But if a rogue planet destroyed life on Earth, we'd have no choice. We would need to create a stronger magnetosphere on the red planet to shield it from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. For the same reason, Mars would need a thicker atmosphere, too. Right now, the Martian atmosphere is almost entirely composed of carbon dioxide with tiny amounts of oxygen. This air is not suitable for people. For humans to live there comfortably, Mars would also need to be warmer. And if we manage to somehow warm the planet up, We'd also be able to release frozen carbon dioxide. At the moment, there are vast reserves of this gas at the red planet's polar caps and other areas. It would help the atmosphere to become thicker, making it possible for water to exist on the surface of the planet. Also, we would need some place to live. NASA has been experimenting with light inflatable habitats, but obviously, it wouldn't be a long-term solution. At the same time, it's incredibly expensive to deliver building materials to Mars, especially if we were pressed for time, escaping our poor collapsing Earth. So instead of shipping prefabricated construction elements to the red planet, we could grow them right on its surface. We could achieve this with the help of fungi and cyanobacteria. They can produce tons of biominerals, like calcium carbonate, as well as biopolymers. They would be able to glue Martian rocky material covering bedrock into real building blocks. In other words, bricks on Mars would be growing on their own, and we'd only have to assemble them into different structures, like walls, floors, and even furniture. At the same time, such a young colony wouldn't be able to survive for more than a generation without getting more supplies from Earth. But, as you understand, this option would be unavailable. 
Then, maybe people would move to colonies located on numerous space stations located far enough from the impact event. In this case, we would be able to avoid the destruction. But such habitats would have to be large enough to support farming and medical facilities, power-generating factories, educational establishments, and many more. And it would be hard work to support such stations without necessary supplies, when a simple equipment breakdown could turn into an unsolvable problem. But let's imagine that our descendants decided to find Earth several thousand years later and succeeded. As you remember, our planet would have changed its position, hanging out way further from the Sun. Now hopefully Earth would have regained its magnetic field after the impact, as well as a little of its original atmosphere. But those who would return to Earth would need water, oxygen, and sufficient atmospheric pressure. And while the new pressure on the planet would probably be suitable for life, most likely there wouldn't be enough oxygen to support unaided breathing. To get a new supply of oxygen, people would need photosynthetic bacteria. Would we find any on the deserted planet? Probably yes. Most or at least some bacteria would survive, maybe somewhere deep under the surface, maybe in the depths of the oceans if any remained on the planet. Tardigrades, the most indestructible animals on Earth, might also survive and greet people returning home. These tiny water bears can survive for up to 30 years without food live in volcanoes, and even endure the vacuum of the cosmos. So these life forms, bacteria and tardigrades, could likely thrive and multiply without any predators to slow this process down. That's good to know, but what would we eat on the newly inhabited planet? Tardigrades are not a diet a person could live on. Well, we could still find some frozen seeds remaining on the planet, or we could keep them on our space stations. Earth's soil could be filled with nutrients remaining after the catastrophic events of the past. People would start planting seeds, trying to get used to the harsh conditions of life on the once deserted planet. And still, it would be better than soulless space stations. Luckily, a rogue planet is unlikely not only to hit Earth, but even to come close to our planet. The appearances of such space travelers are extremely rare, and with how fast our technologies are developing these days, Astronomers would spot such a large celestial object appearing in the neighborhood or even in the entire solar system. It would happen long before a rogue planet turned into a threat to our planet. If it got too close to us, we would use one of the methods developed to prevent asteroids from hitting the surface of the planet. There are quite a few. For example, a kinetic impactor. This technique requires hitting an asteroid to make it change its orbit until it's no longer a threat to our planet. Or we could use a gravity tractor asteroid deflection method. Hmm, that's when a robotic probe meets a space rock, or in our case, a rogue planet, and accompanies it for a few months or even years. Over time, the spaceship's gravity starts affecting the space body, adjusting its trajectory. There's even spray painting celestial objects. I'm not kidding. Darker surfaces tend to reflect less light, while lighter reflect more. Toying with these features, we can make a rogue planet change its course. If we found enough paint to cover an entire planet, that is. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.